Asia is well positioned to grow because, again, they don't have the same sort of structural deficit problems you see in the West. And I think the biggest opportunity is the emerging middle class. Um, you, know, you have people uh, with incomes, with money to spend, with desires to both buy things and to travel. And the propensity to travel increases very markedly you know, once you get into you know, reasonable middle income levels. Our customers want to get information on anything at any time in any way. They want to be able to book a ticket from any place through any medium you know, at any time. Uh, and that's forcing on us uh, the need to really restructure our entire IT architectures uh, to make it possible to do that. Um, it's a good thing though in a way because I think it, it opens up opportunities. There's definitely growth left in aviation uh, in a lot of different areas. Uh, where we see constraints in it is often because of infrastructure. There's, there's not runway capacity or uh, other sorts of uh, airport capacity, maybe overflight capacity, maybe air traffic control capacity. So these things uh, need to be looked into and certainly uh, they involve significant investments and often um, years before they're going to be fully utilized. Um, but in terms of public service and in terms of getting you know, the economic returns to an economy that come from more uh, prosperous business links and tourism links, uh, you know, I think over time they've proven to be justified. One of the complicated things about our business is we, we deal in 100 countries you know, around the world almost simultaneously. And if there were difficult, complicated, overlapping regulations, it makes it very difficult to, to drive your business. Regulatory uh, harmonization and simplicity would also help the business grow at the same time.